Atlantic Puffin, Fratercula arctica. Few North American bird species can generate the oohs and ahs of excitement that greet the Atlantic Puffin, a member of the auk family. With their rainbow-colored bills and black-and-white plumage, Atlantic puffins enjoy wide popularity among non-bird watchers, nearly on a par with the bald eagle and common loon. The Atlantic puffin, as its name suggests, is a bird of the Atlantic Ocean. In North America, they are found from Newfoundland and Labrador, southward along the Atlantic seaboard, to Maine. There are two other birds with puffin in their name, the horned puffin and the tufted puffin both associated with the Pacific Ocean. All three puffins share the large, colorful, triangular bill and short, stubby body shape, and all three species nest in seabird colonies on rocky cliffs and offshore islands. The Atlantic puffin is 12 inches tall. It's a chunky bird with bright orange feet. In flight, it looks like a black and white football buzzing low over the water. The brightly colored bill, the puffin's signature field mark during the breeding season, fades in color in winter plumage, and the puffin's white face takes on a dirty appearance. Young Atlantic puffins also have a dingy plumage like winter adults and a smaller, less colorful bill. Puffins are usually silent, except for when they are on the nesting colony, where they emit a low growling R that sounds like someone running a chainsaw. Because they live their entire lives on or near the ocean, Atlantic puffins are rarely seen from shore. In fact, they only come to land to nest. They dive deep underwater and use their wings like flippers to pursue and catch small fish. Although the Atlantic puffin is not an endangered species, it is vulnerable to oil spills, overfishing, and predation by large gulls, rats, cats, and other predators. After European settlement of North America, the effects of hunting and egging drastically reduced the Atlantic puffin population. Because puffins lay only a single egg each year, and because young birds take four to five years to reach breeding age, the species began to suffer. By the late 19th century, puffin breeding colonies in Maine, on the south end of the species range, had been eliminated. In the 1970s, the National Audubon Society began Project Puffin, a conservation and reintroduction program to reestablish the species as a breeding bird on several main islands. Chicks from still thriving northern nesting colonies were brought to a few islands off the coast of Maine. These chicks were hand fed in artificial nest burrows until fledging. Then they departed for the open ocean. The hope was that several years later, after the birds reached breeding age, these puffins would return to breed where they'd been raised. Puffin calls were played over loudspeakers, and puffin decoys were deployed in hopes of luring breeding birds back to the islands. It worked. Today, there are Atlantic puffin colonies on several main islands, as well as huge breeding populations in Canada and along the coast of northern Europe. Each year, thousands of birders and tourists take puffin-watching cruises off the coast of Maine and Atlantic Canada to see these fascinating birds. They observe the birds from special viewing blinds designed to give close-up looks at the puffins without disturbing the colony. The Atlantic Puffin Pilgrimage is a trip that every birder aspires to make sooner or later. Oh.